Are you building big data analytical solutions? Then I got perfect service for you. This is Adam and today we're gonna get an introduction to Azure Data Lake Storage. Stay tuned. I always like to start with the definition. And Data Lake is your data storage solution that was specifically designed for big data analytics. And how does it work? Well, it's quite simple. Each data lake service underneath has always a container. That container is very often called a file system. And just like any file system, it has a folders and files within it. On each data lake, you can actually have multiple containers, multiple file system containing any structure of files and folders that you wish to have. But I already said that this service is designed for big data analytics. So that means there's something called Azure Blob File System, ABFS for short, with sometimes S at the end, suggesting this is over SSL, so it's encrypted. This file system is Hadoop compatible, which allows many of the existing solutions on the market connect there with no hassle at all, like Hortonworks, Databricks, HD Insight, Cloudera, or Hadoop. All those systems have almost no issues connecting to data like out of the box, just few lines of code from the documentation and you're ready to use it. But additionally, one thing that I want to highlight is something that was recently released, multi-protocol access. Thanks to this access, you not only have the ABFS, but you also have WASB, which is Windows Azure Storage Blob. And again, S at the end for encrypted. Thanks to this, you have two ways to connect to your data lake, a Hadoop compatible one and a classic blob storage API. So things that normally could not connect to data lake can connect now like Power BI or, an or analysis services. Of course, Power BI recently also got connector to data lake through ABFS, but previously it didn't and it was nice way to connect there. So this multi-protocol access is very big thing. If you have some things like older Python SDK that works with a blob storage, it will also work with your SDK. So doing data science is another cool way to utilize your data lake storage. Current version of data lake is generation two because it evolved from the first iteration of data lake storage, but was also built on top of blob storage. And there's a several benefits coming from that because you have two services, two concepts combined into one, but you get benefit of both. From the data lake, of course, you got Hadoop compatible access, but also you get POSIX permissions. So you get that ACL allowed to be managing read, write, execute permissions on the folders and the file level and an optimized driver for those big data analytical workloads. And for the blob storage, you get low cost. And this can be even further taken advantage of with the storage tiers, hot, cool, and archive. You additionally get high availability and disaster recovery. So you get those multiple copies of your files spread across regions. If you want to learn more about geo replication for the blob storage, check my video introduction on the storage account. But this is all I want you to remember right now. So what are the similarities and differences between ADLS and a blob storage? The access tiers are the same. You get both hot, cool and archive storage on both of them and lifecycle management as well. The top level organization of your data also stays the same. It's also container in both cases, but below it, it changes a bit from the virtual directories to directories. So in case of the ADLS, as you see, you have containers and those containers have files and folders. That's a classical structure that you are very accustomed to when exploring your own hard drive. When it comes to blob storage, you only had a container and a file underneath it. And while some tools display those folders, they were only virtual folders. So since there was no concept, you couldn't do any actions on entire folder at once. You always had to iterate through all the files within the specific path of your file. There are some features that you're gonna lose when moving to generation two. Most notably, it's for soft delete, snapshots and immutable storage but also static websites and blob views. Definitely check out the documentation if you need those features, but there's no nothing saying that you cannot create both blob storage and generation two in your resource group and use both of them. And lastly, 
When it comes to comparing two services, we need to talk about ways of authentication and authorizing to your data. When it comes to blob and data lake, you still have access key, shared access signatures, and role-based access control from Azure and Active Directory. But additionally, for data lake, you get access control lists. And thanks to this POSIX and having this file structure and a folder structure, you can now also have access control lists. So you can assign specific people, groups, or application to specific files or folders in your drive and everything protected through Azure Active Directory. This is one of the biggest selling points when collaborating on data across organization. And now the best part, creating a DLS demo followed by controlling access with access control lists. Then I will connect from Power BI and demo you the multi-protocol access. And lastly, we're gonna do a simple ETL using Databricks to show you how easy it is to connect to data lake from your big data analytical workloads. Let's go to the portal and start creating. Go to your menu, hit on create resource and search for storage account. You can also find it here on the quick start because ADLS, as I said, is built on blob storage on top of blob storage. Therefore, it's the same service. So let's create a new resource group. I'm going to call it AMADLS demo. Now I need a storage account name. I'm probably going to use the same AMADLS demo. Is it free? It's free. I'm going to choose North Europe. I'm going to change it to all rest to, to get as fast as possible my storage. And right now everything is the same as for normal storage account. To get an ADLS out of this, go to the advanced tab on the top. Here you will find data lake storage generation tool, which you can hit enable. Of course, you're going to get this notification that you're using soft delete feature, but we don't need it right now. Let's hit review and create. Get that validation running. Everything looks fine. Let's hit create. And I'm going to skip this ahead. All right, deployment finished after 30 seconds. We can now go to the resource and explore what does the ADLS deliver. If you look at the screen and you know storage account already, this looks similar because it's the same service in the end. So everything that you have here is pretty much the same features that you have for the blob storage. You still retain even file shares, tables and queues for your data lake. But the only difference here are the containers. They get different icon because just to indicate you that those are different containers. And here, of course, you have file system. Notice that here it doesn't say add a container, it's just new file system. And here you can create a demo container where we're gonna play around. It's as easy as that. And when it comes to tools, you can either use Storage Explorer in the browser to manage your file systems, or you can just switch to Storage Explorer, right click on your storage account, hit refresh to get the latest version and la latest list of your storage accounts. I like personally to use Storage Explorer because it gets the features easier than the other tools and it allows for more flexibility and more operations from the level of the storage account. That's why I will do the demo here. So I will open my ADLS. On the blob containers, you can find our demo container, which is our file system. Here you can use upload button to upload a folder or a file. I'm going to use it right now to upload a small CSV called movies CSV. Hit upload. And as you see, this is pretty much the same experience you would get with a blob storage. The only difference here is that on each file, you can right click and there's a manage access here. So I can right click, hit manage access, and I have a list of roles available to this file and the permissions that those roles give. So let's say I want to give someone an access, a full access to this file. I can just right hit add here and search for that user or an application. So I can type Adam, hit search and find my users here. I can even find my external user or my local user because I have only two users in my Active Directory called Adam. You can hit add and right now this user is added and you can select what kind of permissions will this user get well maybe i want to give him a read and an execute 
In case of those groups, you can definitely add someone to a group. So you can select this and again type in Adam, search, and assign Adam as an owner of this folder. When it comes to ACL, there's a big guide on Microsoft website. You should definitely check it out if you want to learn more about POSIX and how POSIX compatibility is created for data lake. But for now, this is a simplification of this process explained. Hit OK. So it saved our permissions. And remember, you can do the same on entire container. So you can actually hit here, manage access to grant someone an access to entire container. Same principle, every level you can manage your access. Adam is not here, therefore Adam has no container level access. And the last part, you can also create folders. So demo folder, and maybe within that demo folder, I can again upload a file and I can again select movie CSV. There's one important thing that I want to show you because it's quite critical. Notice that if I will go to the demo folder and I'm gonna go to manage access and I will grant Adam an access. So I'm gonna add Adam here. Search and add this Adam user here. I'm gonna give him an access of read, write and execute and a default for the same. Default, as it says below, will automatically add these permissions to all new children of this directory. But if you notice it said new, and if you're gonna go inside of this folder, you will notice in the manage access that Adam is not on the list because it did not add it. It will only add for any new file. If I'm gonna re-upload the movie CSV right now, then Adam will get an access. Re replace the file, transferring, transfer completed, manage access. And as you see, Adam is right now on the list. This is very critical to remember when you're gonna be designing your permissions. So the next demo that I have for you is Power BI. Power BI can connect to ADLS two ways. It can use both connector for ADLS and for storage account using this multi-protocol access. And I want to show you both. So let's go to more, select Azure, select data lake storage generation two. As you see, it's in beta. And here you need to provide the URL. So this is the full URL to your data lake storage. I need to go back to the portal, to the overview tab. And notice that in the overview tab, you don't have the full address. You can actually find it under properties here under data lake storage, here is the full ADLS file system endpoint. So I can go back now, paste that URL in, hit OK. And I have two options. I can either authenticate through account key or use the same account that I use to log into Azure. To simplify the process of multi-factor authentication, which I don't want to go through right now, I'll use the key. So I'm gonna go to access keys and grab the key, paste it in, hit OK, review the files, hit transform data, so get only one file, and let's say grab the movie CSV, click on binary, and this is our file. So the second thing that I want to show you besides this is this multi-protocol access, because I can actually use more and Azure and hit on the blob storage. And instead of typing the, the IDLS URL right now, just provide the name of the storage account that this lies on. Hit OK. Again, I need to provide the account key. Notice that we lost the organizational account option. This is because for blob storage, it was not implemented in the connector, even though Azure actually allows for that. So let's go back and grab the key again paste it in, hit connect. And as you see, a little bit different structure, but the same principle as here, a storage, transfer data, and the files that we have, and the movie CSV binary. 
and the same file is here. This is how multi-protocol allows you to connect from the tools that not natively connect to data lake. So for the very last demo, I'll go back to portal and start creating ourselves a Databricks, because this will be a demo of Databricks. Databricks, hit create, and type a name. I'm gonna call it AM ADLS demo. The same name as for our storage account. Select the existing resource group. I'm gonna pick location, North Europe is fine, and hit standard, hit create, and let's skip ahead. The resource was created, we can hit go to the resource and launch our workspace. This usually takes between three to five minutes. In this case, it was actually less than a minute. So what we need to do right now, create a cluster really quickly. If you get a blank screen on create cluster, just wait a couple of minutes. Usually workspace needs to initialize and it might to take up to five minutes. So let's create a demo cluster. It's gonna be a standard in a default runtime. I'm gonna disable auto scaling because it's a very small demo and I'm gonna enable auto merit terminate after 30 minutes. And I'm gonna scale down our cluster just to save some costs. Hit create cluster and wait a couple of minutes. Cluster has been created. At this point, we can actually go to our workspace, go to users, our personal user, right click and create new notebook. This is our script that will be executing our big data workloads. And I'm gonna use Scala today because I wrote scripts in Scala. I actually prefer Scala personally, but that's my personal taste. So don't worry about it. For today, we have a couple of scripts that I will run but most importantly, I want to, you to understand there are a couple different ways you can attach a storage. You can, for instance, attach normally through account key. This is the least secure way and I would say the least preferred way of attaching data lake because you have that access control list and advanced security for a reason. So attaching through account key should be disadvised. You can also attach through an app ID. This is what we're gonna do today, but I'm gonna use a little bit bigger code which not only attaches a cluster to a data lake, but also mounts it as a local drive. So what this code does, it takes an application ID and a password and a tenant ID. Those three are basically it's saying that use my Active Directory, an application with this ID. So let's actually create it right now. So in Azure portal, go to Azure Active Directory, to app registrations, and create an app. I already have one, but I can create a new one. I'm gonna call it AM ADLS demo application. Nothing else is required right now. So we just can hit register. So what we did, we created an application account that we're gonna use. An app ID is here, application or client ID. Hit to copy, go back and paste it here. The second thing we need is a password. So to generate a password for an application, go to certificates and secrets, hit new client secret. The description is anything you want and I want one year expiration date. I'm gonna copy to clipboard and paste it here. The third that we need is a tenant ID. So for the tenant ID, you go back to overview and there's a directory or tenant ID here. So this is the ID of our active directory where this app resides. Next, we need a file system name. So you can either add existing or create a new one. So in our portal, if you forgot, go to the resource group, go to ADLS demo, go to the storage account, and in the containers, you're gonna find your file system. In this case, it's called demo. So let's type demo here. And lastly, we need a storage account name. So basically our AM ADLS demo. So let's go and paste it here. If you run this right now, it will mount this as a storage and as a local mount. So just like a normal drive, notice that the source URL is ABFSS. We already said about that. 
And this is nothing you have to really remember. It's just copy paste from documentation and mount it as a storage. So let's run it. Usually mounting takes about 15, 25, up to 30 seconds. So let's see what's the result. As you see, the request is not authorized to perform this operation. Why is that? And the answer is very simple. Because we created an application, but we never gave this application an access. Since we are logging with a static application account, this application account has to have an access. And we can do it twofold. Either we can use ACL to give access to specific file systems, specific folders, or we can use also RBAC. And I'm going to actually show you that this time. So you can actually go to your ADLS, go to access control, add a role assignment here, select a role. And for ETL, I usually like to use the role storage blob data contributor. This allows an application to modify every folder, every file on the storage. And you need to type in that name. So that was AMADLS, AMADLS demo application. Select it, hit save. And if you go to role assignments, you will find your application being a contributor on this entire data lake service. After probably between one to five minutes, this will be propagated and you will be able to run your code again. So let's go back to our Databricks and rerun this code. Control enter to run the code and let's see mounted storage. As you see, it went through flawlessly, returning true at the end. One important remark that I want to make here, never leave your password like that in the open in the code. Use Databricks secrets for that. This is just for the demo purposes. So let's scroll down and test if our mounted storage works. If it does, we can probably run some very small script, like loading our movie CSV from our mount point. If you notice the code beforehand, we mounted the storage until slash mount slash data catalog. So we need to start from it. And then we need to go by folders, which if you remember, I created a demo folder and inside of which there's a movie CSV. So let's run this. And as you see, this was as simple as this. This is of course not a Databricks demo, but you can change those stuff like changing the options for the read and running this again so that you get proper headers. Then you can do a little bit of transformation like selecting specific columns. And lastly, saving this to your data lake using right action. Select right. After one second, if you go back to Storage Explorer and simply refresh, you'll find new folder with the partitions from your Databricks. This is how easy it is to transform and work with ADLS from big data technologies. And remember, every time you do this, you don't have to assign an entire storage account. You can use Manage Access and ACL. And for the applications, you can assign users, but you can also assign applications here, like ICC. By default, I'm an owner because I created this folder, but you can search for other applications, like for Databricks that I had in the portal. See, Databricks application. As you see, Data Lake Storage is easy, yet scalable, fast, and extensible service for storing your data in your big analytical workloads. That's it for today. Hit thumbs up if you like it. Leave a comment if you have a suggestion. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more and see you next time.